Hey guys, all, welcome back to a new video. Google did it again. You know, soon Android 15 saw the new Android version Vanilla Ice Cream will come out, which is usually around September or October, and will then be available for the public. And if you have an app that other people can install and you decide to target this new Android 15 version, then you'll also know that you will have to upgrade your app and your code to match that new version. So if Android 15 maybe introduced a deprecation of, a, of a, some kind of function you used in your project, then you will need to remove this, replace it with some new references. If it brings in some new features, some new APIs or so, you might need to migrate to these new APIs. And all that is cool. That's nothing new for these new Android versions. And also in my Android news episodes over the past months, I already went over all the changes that Android 15 brings, uh, just in little steps for the developer previews for the different beta versions. And I talked about one concept uh, that is called private space. And at first, I really like that concept. It's pretty much an incognito mode for Android devices. So here I have an emulator running on that new vanilla ice cream version and if you open your apps draw here you will notice that there is a new private label with a little lock icon. That is something you need to first of all set up in your Android system settings. But once you did that and you have some kind of authentication method with a pattern or um, a pin or so then you will notice that this pops up. If we click this little lock icon and we then enter our pattern here you will notice that this private space unlocks. So this is pretty much our incognito mode of our Android device now. And all those apps we have here are specifically installed into that incognito mode. So this Chrome instance here is not the same as this Chrome instance here. So those are two different apps. And that means anything you do instead of this Chrome browser, any websites you visit will only be available to this Chrome browser. That's the, the intention of incognito mode. But the same is for example, the case here for this files. If we open this and have a file explorer, uh, then here I already created a sample folder. Uh, we can also just create a new folder just for demonstration. We call this private, a little bit laggy here. Click OK. We have a private folder. If we now minimize this and now open this files app outside of private space, you will notice that here, even though we are in the downloads folder, there is not our private folder. So these are really two separated spaces where the private space is really private. And you can also notice that we can install our own apps here directly into private space. So if we click install apps, this would redirect us to Google Play and we can specifically install an app from Google Play here into our private space. And what we can then do is we can simply click lock and private space will be locked again and nobody except us who knows the pattern is able to use or access the data from private space. And as I said, I like this at the first glance. At the second glance, I was like, oh, this can really lead to some problems in apps because I want to show you something. Let's open a little bit leggy here. Oh, let's open private space again. And you will notice that I already installed this app here into private space, which is in the end, just an app with a button. If we click that button, the app launches a foreground service. So just a service that comes with a notification where the user is aware that the service is running and which actually shouldn't be killed by the system because the user is aware that the service is running. So this could be for data sync. This could be um, that you're processing some camera related things in the background. This could be a file upload or whatever kind of long running thing you're doing in the background that the user is aware of. If we open this, click start service, you will notice that after a few moments, notification should pop up. Sometimes that is a little bit delayed. Yes, there it is our notification which simulates some kind of download which the user should be aware of. So the user knows that the download is happening. But what happens if this foreground service which is now actively running, what happens if the user now hits lock? Let's do that. And you will notice the notification disappeared. And it's actually not just the notification, the whole app's process is killed. So this is pretty much a different variation of process death, which in this case is not initiated by the system, but by the user. And here comes the catch. There is nothing we can do about this. Google doesn't even provide an API that lets us check inside of our app source code whether it's running in private space or normal space. So we can't even check, okay, is this now a private space process or so where we show some kind of message to the user? Hey, you're in private space, uh, please don't lock this during this operation or so. No, we just have to show these things to all users by default, even if they don't use private space. And then that still doesn't solve the problem because the user can still lock private space and kill the app's process. And then users won't think that this is just some kind of dumb feature Google wants from their developers to implement, but users will think, 
oh, what kind of trash app do I have here, which just gets closed when I lock private space? Because users are, of course, not that deep into technical details as we developers are. So as soon as you have some kind of app which has some long-running tasks, whether it's in the foreground or in the background, you now have to be aware that this could be killed at any point, no matter if you do this in the foreground in the app, no matter if you do this in the normal service, your app can be killed at any point. And according to Google, Android warns users about this so that they shouldn't use this feature together with apps that need to perform critical background operations. But I don't really know if that will do it. Because do you really think that the average user can assess whether an app needs to perform background operations? If I think of my grandpa, for example, no, they wouldn't know that. They wouldn't be able to assess that. They, they would be happy that they get the app installed in the first place. So it's again something they just push to us developers, which we have to deal with, but don't provide the API that helps us to properly deal with this. But if the app then misbehaves because of that missing API, the users will think it's a trash app. And maybe I'm exaggerating here. Maybe this thing won't become a huge problem at all. I think that only practice will show. But it's another little edge case we have to think about. So we already do have process death. We have dose mode, which we have to test our app against. And now we also have private space. And even if that just affects maybe 1% of our users, then that is a scenario we have to think of. So in the end, it really depends on what kind of app you develop. If you develop an app where there are no privacy concerns at all or so, then you'll probably be fine not considering this. But what about apps that maybe deal with some uh, medicine data? Or what about banking apps? Any type of app that just includes sensitive details, maybe, maybe even social media apps, which might regularly sync some data in the background. And users could then just unintentionally break those Things. One thing I'm not fully aware of is how this works together with Work Manager, since Work Manager advertises uh, the tasks to be executed reliably. So here I'm not fully sure if the worker is actually run by some kind of system service, the OS managers, or by your app, which process would be killed at that point. Oh, what about launcher apps, which now want to implement this private space? For that, actually, Google provides a solution, but it's quite complex. So on the one hand, launcher apps now need this new access hidden profiles permission. The app must be used as the default launcher app in order to be used with private space. The app then requires a separate launcher container for the private space apps. This separate launcher container must be toggleable, so the user must be able to toggle it on and off, just like here. Uh, so there must be a similar mechanism here for launcher apps. It must obviously be lockable and unlockable. So in locked mode, users should not be able to access the apps from private space, of course. And during private space, you also have to take care that the apps in private space are not discoverable in any way, for example, via search. And that also means that you need an additional broadcast receiver, which receives the actions when the user toggles private space. These are action profile available and action profile unavailable. And you then have to take this and update your UI in your launcher app. So if you decide to target Android 15, think of this, think of scenarios where users could just kill your app at any point and think about how critical that would be for your app's functionality. And if it is, well, you can't do anything about it. You just have to notify your users about not using your app in private space or at least not locking it during that critical operation and then just hope for the best. So at first, I really like this feature, but at the second glance, I don't know about that anymore. I would love that at some point Google actually decides to also take some restrictions from us, from us developers, build in the end the entire ecosystem of apps for all Android devices worldwide. Or what do you think about this? Let us know that down below in the comments. Have a little discussion about this new feature. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye. <laughs>